Good morning, church. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Not a better place to be, right? Not a better place to be than to be in the house of the Lord. I know it's nice and cool this morning, too. I'm very thankful for that. I hope you are, too. And our service now at this time, we are doing our live stream as well. And we just want to say welcome to all those on the live stream this morning. We are so glad that you're able to join us as well. Uh, a few uh, things before we get started on our announcements. Uh, first in the bulletin, we do have our connection card. If you are a guest with us today, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It's a blessing to have you here with us. This connection card has a spot for your information. We'd love your information just to follow up with you and get to know you. We have on the bottom a spot if any of you have any prayer needs or praises to share with us. If you'd write that on the bottom of the connection card, we would love to be praying for you. On the back, on the bottom, it says, do we have your email address? If you're not getting emails um, from our church office and prayer updates, go ahead and write your email address there on the connection card at the back bottom, and we would love to add you to that list, okay? Uh, a few other things to highlight, just a few announcements, some upcoming meetings and events. First, we do have a deacons meeting coming up on Sunday, January 9th at 7 p.m. So deacons, make sure to mark your calendars. Uh, second, we have our monthly business meeting January 12th at 6 p.m. over at the Family Life Center. And then third, you'll see at the bottom of your bulletin there on Sunday night, January 16th, we have our youth camp fundraiser. It's a dinner and dessert auction. Um, I know it doesn't feel like summer, right? It doesn't, okay. But camp deposits are due soon, and the youth are excited to do this. We've done it in the past. You can come, and uh, we are going to cook a special meal for you with uh, some adults' help, Miss Suzanne's help, and the students will serve the meal to you, and then we'll have a bunch of desserts that we'll auction off, and all the money that we raise goes towards camp, okay? And you might even be able to auction off to pie me in the face, okay? If that's something you really want to do, see this beard covered with pie, you can pay for that, okay? And it will go towards camp. Uh, Travis back there is already, I think he's saving up his money, right, Travis? Okay. But come and support us for that again. That's January 16th, a Sunday night at 6 p.m. at the Family Life Center, okay? Again, just a blessing and a joy to be here with you. Just want to say thank you. I know while I've been gone and sick, so many of you have been praying for me and for our family, and we just so appreciate your love and your prayers. So thank you so much. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord together in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are just so good, and we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. What a joy it is to just be in your house, Father, to be together, to worship you, to study your word, Father. Lord, I thank you just for this time of worship that we have now. I pray you be with Brother Jeff, you be with the choir as they lead us, Lord, in song and praise. Lord, I thank you for the message that you have placed on Pastor Greg's heart this day, and I just pray that you would speak through him by your spirit as we open your word together. May we apply your word, Father, to our hearts, to our lives. Lord, use us each and every day to be a light for you, to be shining in the darkness, Lord, to show your love to this community and around the world. Father, I lift up so many I know who are out right now just um, battling um, different illnesses, Lord, different sicknesses, and some who are still recovering from procedures and surgeries. We just lift them all up to you. Lord, we know that you are the ultimate healer, and we just pray for your healing hand upon them, your strength upon them, that you would bring them back to us very soon, Father. Lord, we again are just so thankful for this day. May we rejoice in it, and in all we do, may we honor and glorify your name. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you always rise, uh, it certainly is a privilege to be here in the house of the Lord. And uh, I hope that you come with hearts open to ready to receive a blessing. And we're here, remember, to praise God with our, this is our part of the service where we lift up our voices to praise God and worship him. Please join me. Love lifted me. Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply strained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else. 
Christ could help love lifted me all my hope to him I give everything to him I'll cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs Faithful, loving service, him to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's a master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. Thank you, Lord. Father, today, thank you for the day, Father, our Lord. Thank you for another whole day that you have given and you have been able to do that. Thank you for your word. Will it complete your work? What we need to hear him to be so far. Amen.
If you're able to, please stand. If not, you don't have to. From the burden of sin, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. In the precious blood of the Lamb Would you be free from the passion and pride There's power in the blood, power in the blood Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, power Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. It's been said that uh, I've heard that many of you may not know this next hymn, but if you've been in a church as long as I have, I don't see how you could have missed it. So anyway, it's it has a swing to it. It's in, in uh, six eight time, and it's, so it's like two beats to a measure, and it, you'll you'll get a, you'll get into it. I'll see to it. <laughs> intro again. I am so happy in Christ today that I go singing along my way. Yes, I'm so happy to know and say Jesus included me too. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, Whosoever he included me, gladly I read whosoever come to the fountain of life today. But when I read it, always say, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, so 
but we're not small in spirit. You've got it. You may be seated. Oh 
Open your Bibles with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. I don't know, I wanted to wait for Travis to get back in. We have several birthdays today. Uh, Travis's is one of them. Travis, our young choir member, when we started practicing this song, he knew it was for this day. He said, I love that song and I want to sing it on my birthday. So he was really excited to do that. So Travis has a birthday today. Uh, also, we have Vera Lou with a birthday today, and Sandra Haynes with a birthday today. So happy birthday to you all. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give Travis a little prop when he comes in. I'm glad you're here. Let's read our scripture together. Stand with me if you're able. John chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. 
The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to spend time in your word this morning. Thank you for the day. Thank you for this beautiful sunshine that's shining through the windows. Thank you for the voices here lifted in praise. We're grateful that we have a God that is so mighty and so awesome that even our, our songs fall, sh fall short of who you are, but yet you give us opportunity. Please receive our offering to you, Lord, an offering of praise. And now, Lord, as we study your word, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that you would bring alive this passage to each one of us. I pray we would, everyone, hear exactly what we need to hear this day. May you bless us by your spirit. May we be attentive. May we learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So who likes the cold weather? I know there's some. Yeah, quite, quite a few. When, when I moved to Texas, I came to Texas from Virginia with a whole closet full of warm weather gear. And every time I go into that portion of my closet, I look at jackets that have dust on the top because they don't get to be worn very often. I have a top coat and I wore it today. I get to wear it about twice a year and this is one of them. I'm, I'm very pleased for that. We just uh, spent a week right after last Sunday we headed up to Hot Springs, so just short of a week up in Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. We, it was really great. Well, about two weeks ago, actually it would have been, yeah, about two weeks ago, I was looking at my weather on my phone and then texting out to my children and to my wife what the temperature would be like so they could prepare for our trip. And I said, y'all are going to be so excited because it's showing it's going to be 19 and 20 degrees every day so you can wear your big heavy coats. Well, a day or so later, I was watching the local weather and I watched as this warm front from the Gulf Coast was, was inching northward all the way up across uh, Arkansas. And I said, I just saw that it was going to be 19 degrees and now they're saying unseasonably warm. So I went back and I was looking at my phone and, and there it was, 19 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I, had, I had hit a button accidentally when I was looking at the weather. So they were greatly disappointed, but old man bones, I was very happy because it was warm all week. I, uh, I don't know why I told you that, except I thought that it was fun because it's cold. It has no bearing, but I do, this does have bearing. I, I want to take you back to the fall of 2008. And on a Thursday morning, I left my house in Southampton County with my 10-year-old Jared son in tow. We were going to his first football game at Virginia Tech. It was a Thursday night game against Boston College. That year, Boston College was ranked very high. Matt Ryan was their quarterback. They were, I think, undefeated at the time. Coming to Blacksburg on Thursday night to be seen on ESPN. And I was so excited to go. You know, day of football is great because it includes a lot of fun stuff, a lot of eating and hanging out with others. So that all went very well. We got to the game, and it was a little cool. It was rainy, in fact, so we bundled up and went into the game, and we were getting pretty wet. However, Virginia Tech was doing great on the field. Their defense had shut down the high-flying Boston College offense, and going into the fourth quarter, Virginia Tech was up 10 to nothing. And all through the fourth quarter, until we got to the final two minutes of the game, they were still ahead 10 to nothing. But then something happened. It was as if Virginia Tech started to coast. They went into what I call, well, y'all call it this too, prevent defense, letting them take some ground, but not letting them make big plays against you. Well, with under two minutes to go, Matt Ryan threw for a touchdown. It was 10 to 7. And I'm thinking, okay, we still got this game. We're okay. All we have to do is recover the onside kick and run out the clock. And I watched. And this is what I said, oh no, oh no, 
They did not recover the onside kick. They did. Boston College meaning. So they had the ball again under a minute to play. And I said, well, we will buck up. We'll get tight. We'll put some pressure on the quarterback so he can't move right down the field again. We didn't. And he did. He moved right down the field. With under 20 seconds to go, he's, he's back in the backfield. He is this time being pursued. And as he runs, he heaves the ball to the back of the end zone. Caught for a touchdown. Boston College, they win 14 to 10. Suddenly, the rain got rainier. The cold got colder. And, and we had a dismal drive back to the house. Well, there is a point to the story. I've been in sports long enough, played, played enough, even though not on a professional level, obviously, but played enough sports, watched enough sports to know that a professional or any team, for that matter, cannot afford to coast. That's what Virginia Tech did. They began to coast. And, and you could say it this way, they sat down on the job and it cost them the game. Well, in our passage today, we see that Jesus didn't coast. He didn't sit down on the job. And I really feel and believe for us as a church for this 2022 year, this new year, it is a great call for us not to be coasters. We don't retire no matter our age. We don't retire. I can say that for Vera Lou on your birthday at 59 years of age, she's working as hard today as she was 20 years ago. And, and but she liked that. Okay. We, we don't retire. And honestly, I say that's a credit to Vera Lou. She has not retired. She continues to work just as hard today as she did many years ago. And we are called to do that as well. Not to coast, but to continue to share our faith. Listening to what God wants us to do, where he wants us to go, where he wants us to be. So that's where we pick up into our text this morning. Just a little look at the set, setting. In these first verses, we see that the Pharisees were taking note. Now, if you go back in a couple, a couple weeks ago to our, our message from chapter 2, this chapter ties very closely to that one because Jesus was acting and people were taking notice. In chapter 2, do you remember? This was the, the wedding at Cana of Galilee. It was the first miracle that Jesus performed and people took note. But also in that chapter, Jesus goes into the temple. Do you remember what they were doing in the temple? I dare say they weren't just singing and praising God. They were selling in the temple. They were doing some, some bad things there. And Jesus, we're told in Scripture, fashioned a whip and drove out the money changers, drove out those who were buying and selling. And the Pharisees took note. So we have that connection. Chapter 2, now chapter 4. The one thing that's different is the Pharisees since that time had been watching. And they began, as Scripture tells us early in our passage today, they were taking notice of Jesus' ministry. It says of His teaching and preaching ministry and also His baptizing. When the baptizing ministry fell into the hands of His disciples, those who followed Him, they were baptizing, but it was still part of the ministry of Jesus. And the Pharisees were watching. No doubt they were probably jealous about what was going on. Jesus then... Seeing what's happened, seeing that they're upset, he withdraws. And, and I would say here, presumably to avoid a conflict at this point. Why? Because if the conflict had come now, it may have forced issues to go a different way than what God intended. Whose timetable was Jesus on? He was on God's timetable. And so he just quietly slips out this moment. They're upset. We're going to leave it at that. And the time will come. The time did come, actually. So that's a little bit of a look at the setting. Go a little bit, little bit further. Read verse 4 with me again. And he had to pass through Samaria. We're told that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Physically, Samaria was the most direct route. That would have been the quicker route. I'm told by as, as, as many as three days quicker. But traditionally, that was not the route that a Jew would take. Why? Because Jews and Samaritans hated one another. So the route around Samaria would be taken. But that is not what Jesus did. And so when the Scripture says He had to go, we think, well, why did He have to go? That's not the way the Jews usually went. 
Why did he have to go? There does not seem to be later something pressing for him to get to, to Galilee for. There do not seem to be any urgent needs there. But, and I don't even think it was important that Jesus save those three days. But he had to go. Why? He had to go. I'll just hold my heart because his heart said, I have to go. God was leading Jesus. Not to take a shortcut, which it was, but he was leading Jesus because there was a meeting for Jesus there in Samaria that Jesus needed to keep. He, Jesus knew the, the importance of the spiritual needs there. And, and I'm going to use a word that I don't mean in a bad way. He knew the ignorance of the people there. That's not necessarily a bad word to be ignorant of something. This means you haven't yet been exposed to it. And so he knew that there was a lack of exposure. And so he went and he had this meeting with this Samaritan woman. Now, I, I think it's important that we apply that because there's sometimes times in our lives where we are called to do something, to go to a place that is very clear to God that may not be clear to other people. And yet we still need to go. No doubt they would have told Jesus, meaning the Jews, those who were with him, Master, can you tell the master what to do? And yet I bet some would have tried. Master, you don't need to go through Samaria. We don't do that. We go the long route. And so there were probably people telling Jesus, go a different route. But there's a lot of people that tell us at times, take a different route. But we need to listen to the voice of God and have a heart for what God wants to accomplish. And so Jesus heeded the call of God the Father and he went where God wanted him to Went, went, went where God wanted him to go. Let's go another verse. Verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Two barriers. And you, and you probably already know them. There's two barriers that are mentioned here or, or, or at least alluded to. First is that of being a woman. The second is that of being a Samaritan. So think first about with me about being a woman. Jewish men were not to associate with women, especially publicly. Let me read a couple things from rabbinical writings. This, this not intermingling is characteristic of the Jews, and it is reflected in their Jewish rabbinical writings. Number one, one should not talk with a woman on the street, not even with his own wife, and certainly not with somebody else's wife, because of the gossip of men. And so we have that in rabbinical writing. They were to avoid this connection, this contact between the two. And I think it was very interesting the way it's worded because of the gossip of men. You don't want to start people talking, so don't, don't be intermingling that way. Second example, very straightforward. It is forbidden to give a woman any greeting. They, could, they couldn't say hello. In, in Texas, if they're wearing the cowboy hats, they couldn't tip their hat because that would be giving a greeting to a woman. They weren't to do that. And so Jesus has broken through a barrier of his day, speaking to a woman. And the second is this, speaking to a Samaritan woman. I think it's important that you know a little bit of the history. The Samaritans were descendants of those who had not been deported when the northern kingdom fell in 722 B.C., and so the Assyrians had brought outsiders, the Jews would have called them heathens, brought outsiders in. They intermarried with the Samaritans. And so that was a big problem. And that's why when you hear the Jewish referring to the Samaritans as half-breeds, as dogs, as traitors to the Jewish blood, that's where it all comes from. And there was great hatred between the two. The Samaritans for their part, worshipped Jehovah, but only accepted the five books of Moses. That would be the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They would have accepted that. But, but they cut themselves off from the rest of the Old Testament writings. Well, what would that have done to the Jewish people? You only, you're only taking part of God's word, they would have said, because you accept Moses, but you do not accept the prophets. And that was important to Jewish people. And then the Samaritans themselves would say, we're the true Israel. We are heirs to the promise of God. We have our version of the Bible, the Pentateuch, as the original one given to us from Moses. So again, they're at odds with one another. Another, another sticking point, which made matters worse, the Samaritans 
had offered their help. When the Jews came back from exile, and they're rebuilding the temple. Well, guess who showed up? I don't know if it was a good heart matter or not. People from Samaria had come to help, want to help build the temple. But they were not allowed to do that. If you want to reference Ezra, I believe it's Ezra, Ezra 4, chapter 2. You can just note that. So they had come to help. They were rejected again. They're at odds with one another. Bitterness was so great that occasionally when a Jewish person would pass through Samaria, they would be detained and held. And so it made sense then for Jewish people, just don't go there. Just avoid it. Even though it's a shorter journey, you have to go way around. Just avoid the issue. Don't go there. The Jews worshipped in their temple. The Samaritans worshipped in their temple. They worshipped at Mount Gerizim, which had been, the temple there had been built about 400 B.C. We will see next week when we come and Jesus is still speaking to the Samaritan woman. She says, you say we should worship here, but we worship here. Well, what does Jesus say to them? There will come a day when you will worship. It won't matter which place. You will worship me in spirit and in truth. And we'll see that next week as we go a little further. So that's a lot of, lot of setup. And Jesus simply disarms this woman. He disarms her and quietly asking for help. Jesus cuts through years of suspicion. He cuts through a lot of time of animosity between the two groups. Can you help me? Can you help me, he says. In speaking to a woman, this Samaritan woman, Jesus is really reaching out. He's reached out across those barriers. Now I want you to think about this Samaritan woman. In her case, she had a background that made her want to avoid others. She probably feared embarrassment. She probably feared judgment. I've read of this passage, even the time it was noon, in the middle of the day when she came to the well, I've read of this passage that she went to that well at that time because there was not likely to be anyone there. She didn't want to face anybody else. Why is that? Probably she had been there before and she heard, I would say the jeers, she had heard the whispering, oh, there's whatever her name is. She didn't want that. So she came at a time to avoid that, and yet Jesus was there at that time. That's incredible to me, because people... I, I, I just want you to think about this. People will try at times in their life to avoid Jesus, but there's no way around it. When Jesus is looking for you, he will find you. And he just pops into my mind. I think about the Garden of Eden. What were Adam and Eve doing? They were hiding, and in the garden, they were trying to avoid God, but God found them. And the same thing with us. We, we can run at times and try to avoid, but God will reach out to us, and he continues to because of his great love for us. There's a story of a man I'm reminded of as, as we speak. He, he had been out of church for so long. He, uh, he said, I, I, I might read some of his writings, but he said, 26 years I'd only been to church one time. And actually he'd been twice. He'd been to his daughter's wedding and this one other time. He had had lots of trouble in his life. He had served time in the penitentiary. The one time he went to church, the pastor publicly, publicly in front of people, reprimanded him for his divorce. And the man never returned to church. So it took a lot of courage. He went to a pastor's office this time just because he, he had a need. And his heart need was to belong. His heart need was for healing. But when he had gone to church, that had been thrown out. He had been pushed away. This man's pain, I am certain, is quite the same pain that we're speaking of when we read of this Samaritan woman. Again, more context for this moment. And in verses 9 through 14, we bring our, our section to a close. And what we see there is Jesus offering hope. What does he do? It's not long before this thirsty traveler says, I've got something for you. I've got something for you. And I don't know if you read this. I kind of think this Samaritan woman is from, from Texas. Uh, let me find what I said, what she said. Yeah. Where do you get that there living water? 
Did you catch that in, in verse 11? Where do you get that there living water? She didn't say it that way, but it just comes to my mind. Where do you get that living water? What is the living water? It is the gift of God's salvation. And that's what Jesus is offering to her. Jesus is the living water, but he's also the one who gives it. He gives it to us. The giver of living water, Jesus, came in weakness to share God's gift. And he did just that. How would people react if we reach out that way? If we reach out in weakness to offer what God wants people to have. James Dobson, in his book, Hide or Seek, shared some, some great insight about self-esteem how people are, are carrying burdens. I believe the Samaritan woman was carrying a burden. L listen, listen to his words. He said, if I were to draw a caricature that would symbolize the millions of adults with low self-esteem, I would depict a bowed, weary traveler. Over his shoulder, I would place the end of a mile-long chain to which is attached tons of of scrap iron, old tires, and garbage of all types. Each piece of junk is inscribed with the details of some humiliation, a failure, an embarrassment, a rejection from the past. He would let go of the chain and free himself from the heavy load which immobilizes and exhausts him. But he is somehow convinced that it must be dragged throughout life. Paralyzed by its weight, he plods onward, digging a furrow in the good earth as he goes. But God would say, you can free yourself from the weight of the chain if you will but turn it loose. And I think it's a very amazing picture if you listen to those words. But, but, but even more amazing is the fact God wants to set you free. We, we can look at this two ways. You can think about that story and you can say, I know somebody like that. They won't let go of the chain. Or you can really look at your own heart and say, that's me. I won't let go of the chain. What chain do you need to release in 2022? God wants to set you free from it. Without embarrassment, without guilt, without shame, He wants to set you free. He wants, to to give you the living water, which is eternal life through Him, the promise of heaven. He wants to give it to you. Have you received it? Have you received that living water? Are you living? I go back to a, to a comment I made just a couple minutes ago. Are you offering in weakness what you have that others may come to know Jesus? Let's make that a commitment as a church family for 2022. Amen? Let's stand and pray. Lord, we are grateful for your word. We thank you for this, this brief section of scripture that we looked at today. May we learn from Jesus about caring for others. May we learn from Jesus' response to the Samaritan woman that there is no weight that's so great that we have to handle on our own. We have a great God who offers forgiveness. May we all turn there to receive forgiveness, to receive eternal life through Jesus, to receive direction for this day and the one that follows. And may we be takers. As Jesus has said, go and make disciples. May we be takers of that good news to everyone we, we come in contact with. Lord, I pray today that as you bring us now to this time of decision, that there's even one person who needs to make a decision about their salvation, that they would respond to you today. Maybe this story of the Samaritan woman cuts close to home. You see in her life the pain, the struggles, the situation that you are facing, but you see also the love of a Savior. Would you respond to Jesus today? Would you say, Jesus, where do I get this living water? Would you hear then, you get it from me, Jesus responding? Would you hear, pray with me, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me 
Make me whole and use me as yours. Live in my heart, my body, my life from this day forward. Would you pray that prayer to Jesus? If you just prayed that prayer, I call on you now, the Lord calls on you now to step out from where you're standing. Come forward and even now as I'm praying, come and take Brother Sam's hand and share with him what God has done. If there's some other decision on your heart, some other need, come and pray at this altar. Pray with me or with Brother Sam. Commit this year in weakness to share the love of God with others. Lord, I pray by your spirit that you would move during our time of invitation. I pray that you would move throughout this church during 2022. May we continue to reach people with the gospel. May we be your church, your instrument in this area, this city that you have placed us. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a decision to make, if you need a prayer of encouragement, we are here for you. The altar is open to anyone who would venture up to pray. This is your opportunity. As we sing together, near my God to thee, you come. Near my God to thee, near to God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here this morning. Tonight, I, I don't know if it's in our bulletin or not, Jenna will be sharing about her e Egypt experience, maybe even uh, Turkey experience. So some of her trips so far, uh, this point in her experience, as I've said a couple times already, she is not on a mission trip, but I think it's very interesting, so I hope you'll come back and she'll have a question and hopefully... She'll definitely have a question time. We hope an answer time as well. That's the plan anyway. So come back tonight, 6 o'clock, for that experience. Hope to see you then. Brother Bob, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?